This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're going to look now at the chapter on adjustments to profit and suspense accounts, the chapter in the free lecture notes, uh, which are actually two separate problems. And so I'll have two separate lectures, this one just on adjustments to profit. Uh, but I put them in the same chapter because um, both of them, as you'll see, involve effectively correcting errors. Anyway, this uh, the first lecture will be just on adjustments to profit. And to explain what it is and how we approach it, can you look straight at example one? It says, Alison's draft financial statements show a net profit for the year of 52,380. Now, what we mean by the draft statements is we've come in at the end of the period uh, to prepare our statement of profit and loss and our statement of financial position. Um, we've prepared a, a set of statements, but they're not yet what you might call finished. They're not final. Uh, we've got to check things and maybe an auditor will come and they'll check things as well. So I've prepared a statement of profit or loss and we've got 52,380. Uh, but as we go through and look at things and check things, um, we found, it says subsequently, so afterwards, the following errors have come to light. Now we'll run down them in a minute, one by one. But it says, prepare a statement of adjustments to profit in order to calculate the correct profit for the year. So here, we're not asked to prepare a statement of profit or loss, a full statement. We can't. We don't know all the individual sales, cost of sales, and so on. But our job is to say, well, we've had arrived at a profit of 52,380. When we look at each of the errors, is it going to affect our profit? And if it does, will it make the correct profit higher or will it make it lower? What is the correct profit? And so let me do a little statement. First of all, the draft profit fifty-two three eighty. Uh, we'll read each of the errors in turn, but if it's going to affect the profit, I'll add or subtract to hopefully end up at the end with the correct profit. So let's run down. A, no entry has been made for $563 cash received from Adele, a customer whose debt was written off last year as irrecoverable. Now remember, I, all right, a bit, bit of revision of an earlier chapter, but you know, Adele did owe us 563 Last year, we'd written her off. We'd credited receivables and debited irrecoverable debts expense. And so at the beginning of this year, she didn't actually owe us anything. However, this year she has actually paid us. And of course, what's the entry uh, when an irrecoverable debt pays us? We debit cash. And if you remember, we should credit irrecoverable debts expense. It's like a negative expense. It makes the total expense lower, like a bit of extra income. And so surely that will increase our profit. No entry has been made. We've not dealt with it at all. And obviously it should have been dealt with. This unexpected money received will increase the profit. And so I need to um, add it to the um, current figure. Uh, irrecoverable debt received five six three. Uh, I won't do a total yet. We'll wait till we dealt with all the errors. And of course, in the exam, this is just quick workings. So you would have write down all the descriptions. But anyway, let's look at the next one. Closing inventory valued in the draft accounts at its cost of 8920 was believed to have a potential sales value of 7930 is that going to affect us well yes it is because remember 
Again, it's revision back to the chapter on inventory. That inventory should be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Usually, therefore, we do value at cost, but here the realizable value, the sales value, is lower. So we should be valuing inventory at 7,930. At the moment, we've been valuing inventory at 8,920. And of course, if you change the value of inventory in the step to profit or loss, you'll affect the profit. So we are going to need to change the profit by the difference. Uh, the inventory valuation. We'd valued it at 8,920. It should only be 7,930. And so we need to change the profit, change the inventory by the difference, which will change the profit 8,920 minus 7,930 is 990. However, if we reduce the value of the closing inventory, how will that affect the profit? Will it make the profit higher or lower? Now, I did stress this before in the lectures on inventory, that always, if closing inventory is lower, we'll end up with lower profit. If closing inventory is higher, we'll end up with higher profit. Here, we're reducing inventory, the inventory will be lower, therefore the profit will be lower. Uh, if you're unsure, go back to the lecture on inventory, because I did stress that it was important. Uh, or, I have to speak quickly, remember, to get the cost of sales, we subtract uh, the closing inventory. So we, at the moment, have been subtracting 8,920 to get cost of sales. If we subtract a lower figure, we should be subtracting 7,930. Subtract a lower figure, we'll end up with a bigger cost of sales. And a bigger cost of sales means lower profit. C. Goods which had cost 2000 have been sent to a customer just before the year end on a sale or return basis. Let me explain what sale or return is. Suppose you were thinking of buying this calculator from me. And you said, well, can I just borrow it uh, for a day or two and uh, have a go? And then I'll let you know uh, whether I want it or not. And if I don't want it, uh, I'll give it you back. If I do want it, then uh, obviously you can invoice me and I'll pay you. And that's sale or return. So effectively, I'm just lending it you for a few days. I've not sold it to you because you might give it me back. It's still my calculator. Uh, and I've, it's only if you come back and say you want to keep it, it's only then that I can say I've sold it and then that I'll invoice you. Well, what's happened here? Um, goods which have cost 2000 have been sent to a customer just before the year end on sale or return. We've treated it as a firm sale with a profit of 20% of cost. However, no confirmation of the sale had been received from the customer. Well, as I said, until you either give it me back or you tell me you're definitely going to buy it, until then, it's still my calculator and I haven't sold it. And that's what's happened here. Uh, we haven't had confirmation of the sale yet. So we haven't made the sale. We shouldn't be recording the sale, but we have. We have accounted for it as a firm sale and taken profit. And that profit will be included in that 52,380. Well, again, we shouldn't have included profit. We haven't sold it yet. We've only sold it if later we're told he's going to buy it. And so we need to remove that profit. Uh, and how much is it? We were making a profit of 20% on the cost. The cost was 2,000. Uh, and so we recorded profit of 400 and we shouldn't. We need to remove it. 
Uh, now, incidentally, although that's correct, uh, actually, two adjustments are needed. In that, you see, if we've treated it as a firm sale, we'll have included it in our sales figure. And our sales figure, uh, the cost was 2000 profit 400 we live including 2,400 in sales, and we haven't made the sale. So if we reduce sales by 2,400, lower sales mean lower profit. However, at the same time, because we've recorded it as though we'd sold it, we won't have included it in our inventory. And yet, as I said, even though we've lent it to the, uh, this customer, because they haven't yet bought it, it's still ours and it should be included in inventory. Uh, at the moment it hasn't been included in inventory and it should be. Uh, including inventory at cost. And so you'd increase the inventory by 2000. And as I was talking about a minute ago, higher inventory automatically means higher profit. Uh, and so again, Effectively, it is just 400 needs removing. You don't need to do this business here, but do be aware, it is actually fewer sales, more inventory. Finally, D. A payment for rent charged in full to the current year includes 490, which relates to the next accounting period. And no adjustments been made for this. So what does that mean? You know, we paid rent this year. I don't know how much we paid. Maybe we paid 2,000 in total. I'm making up a figure. And we've charged that in full to this year's profit. So we've got an expense for rent of the full 2,000. However, 490 of that isn't this year's expense at all. That's a payment for next year. It's a prepayment. And the expense we should charge is the cost for this year. 490 of the 2000 isn't this year at all. So the expense should be 490 lower than what we've recorded. Again, I invented the 2000. I don't care whether it's 2000, 10,000, or whatever. We charge the whole payment, 490 of it shouldn't have been an expense this year, it's a prepayment. So if our expense is going, should be 490 lower, lower expense means higher profit. So add this rent prepayment. What was it, 490? And there we are. And so what is the correct profit? <clears throat> Calculator 52380 plus 563 minus 990 minus 400 plus 490. I get 52,043. So there's the correct, the adjusted profit. So no, I think that's quite a nice exercise. It's a nice way of. Um, testing lots of things at once. Do you remember how we deal with the recoverable debts recovered? Do you remember the effect of changing the inventory? Uh, do you remember what prepayments are? And so on. So it's a nice way of testing several things in the same question. And again in the exam, this really is just quick working so you don't waste time writing all the words down uh, as fast as you can. It's adjusting where necessary ending up with the correct figure. All right, so that's adjustments to profit. Um, the other bit in this chapter, well, because, as I say, although it's correcting errors, it is actually a different uh, technique. Uh, I'll deal with that in the next lecture. <laughs>